very nice. Two beautiful Prabhus going on a walk. Jay Gurudev. Jay Gurudev. We have with us uh, Rishi Aditya. And uh, we are walking the talk. Uh, walking on... Uh, let's, let's choose your favorite Japa walk. Uh, track. Circuit? Yeah, circuit. We go, you lead the way. All right. For those who do not know, Japa uh, is a practice that we do here in Bhakti Marga. It involves a mala, like that. Uh, that's a mala bag. Inside there's a mala with beads. And we just chant a mantra, which is... Shri Vitala Giridari Parabrahmane Namaha. Amazing mantra. And we all recommend it. Maybe at the end, we just do one round at the end. All right. our talk so uh, people have uh, can hear the mantra and maybe they will join next time um so rishi aditya bro i'm super Maria excited aditya <laughs> i'm super excited to have you on this walk Hanuman. Jay okay. Hanuman. Um, where do we start uh i for me aditya is uh, when i first came to bhakti marga he was the relatable guy <laughs> for me he was like I I want I have to talk with that guy because he was uh, always uh, open to talk with everybody he's super funny it's a natural sometimes unintentional humor because <laughs> he's he, he plays against yeah. sometimes I heard some satsangs uh, of Aditya uh, destroying puja plates and um, <laughs> making a lot of noise in unusual situations so i said oh i love this guy he's a comedian we have to we have to talk with him so uh share us your story bro people have different cities you know <laughs> people can create things manifest things some people can destroy things <laughs> and you're the destroyer uh, it's, you it's just natural it's natural very natural yeah uh, um, tell us your story bro so um I'm from Argentina mm -hmm. and around 11 years ago I started a trip. I wanted to, to know more about myself, about the world and I started a trip in Latin America. First I'm, you know, it's a typical circuit if you're in South America is to do, you know, the Peru, Bolivia, it's very mystical places. Ah, there's, there's, there's also a walk there. There's a yeah, there's two right. lanterns, no? Yeah, and you normally end up in Cusco, you know, the sacred valley of Cusco. Oh, yeah. And, but, I mean, in Brazil also. So the trip was basically yeah, to find... Way, bro. These are people doing Seva here. We All talked about place. Seva. Yeah, Seva is amazing. Um, so in, I started this trip basically because I broke with my ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. and that put in evidence that I was not taking care of myself, of my, let's say, inner relationship, my inner uh, state. So when we broke, what happened is I felt broken. Uh -huh. It was, was not the external relationship was broken, something inside felt... Um, destroy and and I didn't know how to fix it okay you know because I, I had my companies my business back then already three three <laughs> um, medium small business small businesses but enough to have a very good living and to work from dusk till dawn yeah yeah I could travel around and do other things for the for the business my friends were taking care of them but I didn't know how to fix this inner void mm -hmm. uh, that somehow was always there, this, but I didn't tackle it, you know, this mm -hmm. issue. So uh, having a girlfriend, a relationship was a perfect patch in that moment uh -huh. to avoid the questions that they didn't have answer for me. You know, what's the meaning of life? Why are we alive? Why I'm working every day, doing money, buying <laughs> stuff like... Why? You know, but then you don't get a... Okay, because of this. <laughs> you, <laughs> you just like do it because everybody's doing it everybody's and this doing is the model. It. And yeah. if you don't do it, then you're completely off of yeah, the society. Yeah. And if you start questioning, you ask to what? To Google. 
<laughs> what is the meaning of life? <laughs> how can I be happy? Like I did that questions to Google. Like how can a person be happy? You know, because yeah, unfulfillment. But when I was in a relationship for a few years, that got that got uh, covered. And ah, you when, covered it with the relationship itself. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't because, need an answer because I didn't, because the answer was not there. So let's enjoy it. The meaning of life for me was let's enjoy the time we are alive. Let's maximize the, the pleasure. The pleasure. And when you die, <laughs> if you had a good experience, then you can say that your life was successful. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, I, I come from economics. I studied <laughs> business and economics, so this, that was my... If the profit is good at yeah. the end of the day, uh, that was uh, a good business. Income minus cost. <laughs> if it's positive, <laughs> it's good. So the cost of having fun, and you calculate the fun. So, yeah, that, that mentality. Okay. And so when, again, so when I finished the relationship, all of this came just suddenly up. Okay. The, the whole feelings of um, not belonging to this world, of what's the meaning of all of this? Hmm. What's the meaning of pain? What's the meaning of happiness? What is the meaning of Why do people suffer? Friend? Why people suffer? Hmm. Why, but both are... Um, both are meaningless with death. Yeah. You know? That's I started reading also books about death and stuff and basically I found one author that said nothing has a meaning if everything ends with death. If everything because that was kind of my perception of the world. When you die it's finished. Yeah. Once you die it's, it's finished. So why why you will be a nice person? Why you will be a bad person? Yeah. It Why has you, no point. There is no point. Morality has no uh, purpose. You are a spark in minus infinite to today. Uh -huh. You live for minus, uh, you know, just a fraction of a second in what is eternity. And then you die for eternity, you are dead. So what is actually... It has no point. It, has it, no ma point. it makes no sense. And that destroys me. Like Actually, after this, trying to find answers, I went to the mountain for two months. And I was just reading and meditating and thinking, what is the point of all of this? Mm -hmm. um, trying to find fun in things that I used to like, mm -hmm. you know, again. It had no point. Friends, there. party. No, I just felt like completely off. Like, this is not what I'm looking for. Completely not. So that's how the trip started. And then I started traveling. And then I never came to Europe. So I said, let's do an Euro trip. Maybe the answer is there. <laughs> I, I love the castles, actually. In Latin America, we don't have many castles. So I was a f quite fanatic of castles when I was a kid. I said, I want to go to Europe and just live in a castle. <laughs> so I did some experiences. I came, I work in vineyards. I, I, uh, I stay in a castle helping like a chateau castle from the 1700s. In, uh, uh, in France? In France, yeah. <laughs> and helping them, the people from the house. Like I really wanted to live the experience of, okay, maybe in the past, because also was this feeling. The people in the past, maybe they were not so unhappy like today because uh, we have too many things today, you know, uh, technology. To, to leap a little bit in time to check, maybe I have a feeling of what is right. How was it? Because they didn't have time to get bored, you know, back then. Like they were really busy. You need to take care of the land, of the kids. They worked the, all day. And you work the whole day. And it's so it's. We are a bit too soft in this generation. That's why Guruji is pushing us to do <laughs> seva every day so we don't get soft. <laughs> He don't like soft, <laughs> softness. No, no, it's not softness his style. Good. Um, so yeah, I was just searching for experiences. Basically, I was looking for happiness. Again, yeah. I felt dead. I felt, I felt like I'm just a walking dead. You know? mm. And there is no point in life. Yeah. So that was the status of my brain when I started traveling in Europe. And travel around for one year. And I was just about to buy a horse in Mongolia <laughs> and do like um, I wanted to just cross Mongolia by horse riding because I, I have some nice stories about you bro yeah I wanted to travel wow I mean why, horse. I, why yeah, not because you have nomad tribes there and you can just like stay in random places you have some also like valleys deserts you have everything you cannot do it in winter but and then I say okay I, let's do that uh, but there was also another voice saying, go for Morocco, you know, Africa. So I was in this, meanwhile, trying to 
get into the game again of having friends and parties. So I was living in the south of Germany. And I reached a moment that was just too much. Yeah. Too much, just too much thoughts, too much options. Like as, uh, that was also a big problem. Like I had money to survive easily during the month. Mm -hmm. I have freedom, I have free time. So I was in the exactly cliche of what every person dreams with. Yeah. Normally, or you have money and you don't have time. Yeah. Or you don't have money, but you have a lot of time. No? So you had the perfect condition. Perfect conditions. And I could do whatever I wanted, basically. I mean, not, not whatever, yeah, but uh, Elon for... Musk, but I would say I could, I have many options. Yeah. And so it was actually so bad to have so many options <laughs> because everything is possible or, or, the, or what I consider possible is I just need to decide. Yeah. And that led to a stagnation, you know, just to stay in one place and just about a mental, uh, how do you say, like a... Fantasy of what will be. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah. you were having like um, projections yeah, of, of what like, you would like to do. Yeah, because that also is what will be my life about, you know? Mm -hmm. If that becomes like, I'm become a traveler of like horse rider, or, you know, <laughs> like whatever, like you just project. You were dreaming, yeah. How that will affect your future, because also you start thinking, should I stay in one place? Like yeah. perpetual trotter that never stops traveling. I was traveling. Yeah. I, well, I was already three years traveling for me. You know, and I used to like I used to have an hotel, so I was in contact with travelers. <laughs> so it was, yeah. So um, in this state, I decided I just need silence. I need yeah. quietness. The, it's too much. Uh, I don't want to speak with people. I don't want to see people. I don't want to drink. I don't want to. I just I need to be with myself a bit. And I went one day for the Black Forest in Freiburg. Mm. And I'm in the middle of the forest. I met this Indian guy, a random guy with a bicycle in a very rocky, full of roots, huge trees in the Black Forest. And it's this Indian dude there just walking with a bicycle alone. I myself alone because there was not, not many people walking. And we immediately, we cross side and you feel like friendship. And I started talking with him. We did a picnic. And I asked him, like, oh, what do you do? First, he told me, you know, he comes from India. He starts sharing that, um, how is life in India? He has his marriage arranged. So he was supposed to come back after finish his studies. So he wanted to escape a little bit yeah. before. No, he was super cool with it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's why I was surprised. He was just wanting to finish his studies. So he came back to India and then he get married. The, the family already found a wife for him and with the house he will live. And then we start speaking about spirituality and then we touch the concept of Dharma. Mm. And Dharma is basically whatever you, you do, duty, yeah. your duty in life. You just need to do it like fully into it. And, and I ask him, what do you study? And he studies like finance, technology and finance. And they were basically developing clever technological systems to deal with like uh, um, markets, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stock markets. Stock markets. And I feel like, how is it possible that a person is spiritual by just uh, Working doing the stock market worldly market. things? Yeah. Trading stocks. Trade, and, it, and also like about money, you know, like I thought like spirituality and money, these kind of things. They yeah, don't they cannot work together. Technology, like you have to renounce the world to become You spiritual. need to run to the ashram. <laughs> <laughs> and give your money away. and uh, Yeah, and give it poor. to the poor. Or, um, or also technology, you know, you cannot use a cell phone. Of course, like Amish, yeah. you have to be like Amish, uh, never use electricity. Go to the desert for 40 <laughs> years in silence. And that's spirituality. That's why was my notion. Uh -huh. And he told me, no, actually, for being spiritual in, in the Hindu um, like conception of it is you do what you need to do. And you do it with full awareness that God gave you that duty and you need to do the best out of it. Boom. And I say, okay, I, I don't 100% share that, but okay. And then he started sharing that he had a um, family guru who passed away uh -huh. not long ago. And he told me that when the guru passed, he, they put the body on the, like, in the center of the house. You know, these Indian big houses that yes. this, you go they inside and like there's inner bar. Yeah. Yard. They have like yard. inner yard. Yeah. And flowers start like manifesting and falling on the guru on his death uh, bed, death bed. and 
that's I, I kind of start laughing and say like, ah, but maybe it was the wind, you know, from the <laughs> trees, yeah, from the from the neighbor. <laughs> I, and he started laughing on me because, oh. yeah, he saw uh, this. Oh, this European. This, yeah, <laughs> these guys. And he told me, no, it's just like. Um, <laughs> and then he started explaining to me about the guru, actually. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, a guru is actually a very important part in the Hindu tradition because he, like, is very saintly or elevated souls who come to help people, mm. to elevate them. And he's like, he's a key figure in. In our family, so all the family were sad when the guru passed, and so I and that caught my attention quite a lot. I said, "Wow, that's actually interesting." Interesting concept. We don't have it. Yeah, no. I, in the uh, West, there's no concept. I never heard in Argentina also about no gurus. Yeah, you you, you use the word guru, you know, like a stock market guru, and you follow these guys. Who, but they, but in that sense, I, they, never with the deepness of that this guy was speaking about. So. I stay one or two days in the mountain, he left, and then I came down, and when I came down from the mountain, my dad called me, and he said, oh, uh, Felipe, <laughs> was my name, um, I heard that there's a, like a, a strong spiritual master, a guru, next from where you are living, uh, he's uh, Vishwananda, he said. I said, what? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people say he's the reincarnation of uh, Yogananda. You know, you need to, please. Because my father was a devotee of Paramahansa Yogananda. Ah, okay. He used to, like, yeah, I mean, I say I was not familiar with the concept of the guru because my parents, they didn't, they were just spiritual themselves. They didn't want to put any kind of ideology on us. Mm. My mother was a strong follower of Jesus and uh -huh. my father of Paramahansa Yogananda. Ah. But so we built, like we grow in our house just like a normal kids with doing normal stuff. Okay, so they they never shared that as a practice? Like, no, so are... no, they were doing, sometimes, yeah, sometimes they, they try to share like breathing techniques, these kind mm -hmm. of things, but not like the, the guru as a figure. Yeah, the philosophy. So, uh, my father called and he said, please go to see him because maybe um, I want to know how it is. Mm. So then I can go to myself. I'll do it for me. Yeah, check go, it out. go and check it out <laughs> and then I see. So I came uh, to, story short, I decided to come after a lot of resistance because I didn't want to come. And when I arrived in the bus, just before arriving to Springen in Biesbaden, I sit on the bus and one person come, stand in front of me and say like, are you going to the ashram? And I say like, yeah, why? Like, how do you know? And he say, uh, a pleasure. And he gives me a hand and he say, my name is Kailash. <laughs> and he's a, he's Swiss, he's a monk in the ashram. And he was, he's the facilities manager, like the head of facilities in the ashram. And he told me the guru is not yet in the ashram, but if you have free time, you can just come, come and you help us a bit on the, and because I was not really into meditation, I'm quite like uh, practical active. things. Uh, that I like it more. Yeah, let's do some seva. <laughs> yeah. So immediately yeah. fits in. And I started helping in facilities, waiting for the guru to come. He came after like uh, maybe 10 days or one week, but he stayed only one night and then he left. Ah. And meanwhile, I was listening all the stories from the people, how amazing he is, the miracles, uh, how challenging he is also. And so I was start building this idea of what Guruji is. Yeah. And you had an image in your head already. Yeah, of like, man, he's so amazing, you know, <laughs> because everybody, of course, they share the... The most amazing thing. The most amazing thing. thing. Says, yeah. But Guruji is also, like, he's everything, you know, he yeah. also... So I was building all of this... Uh, expectation. Expectation yeah. of what, what is this uh, Guru about. And then basically, basically a, a time ago, he, he arrived to the ashram, like one week after. And... And everybody's like super like excited because he's going to give a satsang and he's like, ah, oh, let's go. He's coming for sure soon. And then basically he comes and for me it was a big deception, like going, seeing him driving in this blue, gold, shiny golf car with the neon lights underneath and he was his jewelry and this like the in, in Hindu robe and people going down to him and like, you know, with smiley face, like I meet the... Like this lovely person. Superstar. Superstar. Super yeah. Star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember it's so like so much judgment. You know, I, I could not just bear it. I, I, I was just thinking, what's wrong with these people? 
you know, I, I immediately started like judging him, judging the, the people, people around. around yeah. um, my mind went in a completely negative uh -huh. uh, place. And so he started giving satsang and he sits, he asks questions. Kailash, the one who actually, like the, the person I, I love the, the most person, here yeah. because he was so open like a father. Um, he asked a question and Gurji starts shouting at him like, why you ask about, because he say, uh, Gurji, can you share a story of Krishna as Kailash? Uh -huh. And Guru is like, why you ask a story of Krishna? You don't know any story of him. Like, at least go and read, you know? And so Guru is shouting at him. And I see Kailash expecting him to be uh, like upset, crying or something. And Kailash is with a smile <laughs> from side to side laughing, you know? I say, what's wrong with these people, you know? Like he's shouting at you, like stand up for your rights and like make some justice. <laughs> And Guru is there and in his movement, he hits with the back of uh, the hand, back of the hand, like the glass that was with his water uh -huh. next to his asana and the water flew away. And, and also I saw him, you know, checking the phone. I said like, what is that? <laughs> How is possible? Like in my mind was he's addicted to the phone, <laughs> not different than me because I'm a phone addict, you know, yeah. and I see him like he's also checking the phone. Um, he, he that cannot control his emotions, you know? He goes into rage very easily. Um, he's he not aware of the environment. He's not, yeah, he's very clumsy. <laughs> clumsy. And I'm super clumsy. I said, what oh I'm supposed he's to reflecting learn? me. Yeah. No, I thought like, what I'm going to learn from him? Yeah, because it's, it's like me, it's like different me. what he can teach it's me because worse. I do this every day. <laughs> exactly, I will just learn how to be worse, you know? In how I, so, and I was just, like my brain just was collecting information and I didn't know where to put that. It was just, was too much. And judgment, like exploding on judgment. And just, what is this? What, why, did I, why did I came here? Why I'm losing my time? Um, and then I stayed after the satsang completely disappointed. <laughs> just like, you know, like exhausted. <laughs> like my brain was exhausted of the judgment that was going on. <laughs> and, and I said, and I and Gurji says, okay, everybody out. And so only the Swamis stay there. And inside of myself, I say, like, look, I came here to see if God exists or not. Mm. I, I'm not moving. You know? And, and I just stay there like inner if if you can hear me. Yeah. yeah, if you can hear me, like I want to speak with you. Because I came here, I didn't share this part, but I started questioning myself about God mm -hmm. in the last part of the trip. Mm -hmm. So strong because of a person who had very godly experiences, I say, I want to meet God. Okay. Because if God exists, there is nothing to worry about. Then it doesn't matter the questions I have, the things I do. If God exists, then everything is cool. And that is the conclusion I arrived during my trip. Very good conclusion. And yeah, well, back That's then. A, yeah, very good. This is a perfect starting For point. a beginner. If starting, if God exists, I have nothing to worry about. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, but this, yeah, you know, the trust that yeah, yeah. everything is taken care of. Yeah, yeah. that, that I don't need to really take care. I need yeah. to act, yes, but I don't really need to take care of mm. Um So in this moment, I said, I came here to see if God exists, you know, and I'm not moving. Like this guy is kicking everybody out. I don't care. Hmm. I really want to know. And the and Jetreya, like his bodyguard, <laughs> he passed walking and he like doesn't acknowledge me. He, like I don't exist. He walks. And he by. really takes care that everybody. Yeah, yeah and he's very good <laughs> kicking out people. <laughs> he's very effective. It's his job basically. But I just stay there. Of course he was more friendly with newcomers, so maybe that impacted. Yeah. I will not say that it was a miracle, but yeah. And then Gurji lifts his eyes. He look at me and he blinks. Just like like two blinks. And in that moment, all the judgment, all the negativity, all the, like this, you know, like biting glass yeah, yeah. feeling, just gone. And, and I start smiling. And, you know, and this feeling of, oh, wow, he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh, actually, he's a nice person. <laughs> and because he just, like, he blinked yeah. and smiled. And he called me. And he said, um, you're from Argentina. I think one of the Swamis told him. Mm. I said, yeah, yeah. And he says, how is the Pope? <laughs> because the Pope is Argentinian. It's like, what? You know, and so it's like, what? <laughs> and yeah, how is the Pope? And I say, I don't know, actually. And I saw the Pope in Italy like three months before. I say, ah, I think he's a bit old, you know. I told him, he's working. <laughs> I say, oh, okay, okay. And he started asking some random questions. 
And I'm like more confused than before. At this point, it's just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and Guru is saying like, oh, I have such a headache. Okay, I, I go. <laughs> so I'm thinking, this guy, man, like, with all the things, and, and now he has a headache. Like, how can a superhuman have a, have a headache, you know? <laughs> and I just went out, like Guruji walked away, and I go out to the grass, and I lay down on the grass, exhausted. <laughs> And I say, okay, God doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but it still didn't match all the stories from the people, you know. Yeah. That's why I'm, you know, I'm, part of my sevas is to collect experiences of yeah. people around yeah. and we film them. It's because what kept me here was that didn't match the perception I have from this Swami Vishwananda uh-huh. with what the people speak the about him, you know. The people, yeah. So I was aware that my experience was not their experience. But I trust them a lot for, for no reason, because yeah. I didn't know them. I just trust that what they were saying was true. But I because that you have this in Bhakti Mark, I mean, all the people you, you see and they share their experience, they are grounded, educated, yeah. amazing human beings. That they, they could be in the top of their game, in their activities, whatever they do in life. And they have this somehow not so common experiences. And you cannot say, man, look at this guy. He's makes total sense <laughs> you know you cannot <laughs> question that yeah yeah you have this feeling of trust yeah. in the people maybe if you see it in a in a documentary or in a video you say okay it's made up yeah yeah. but still i don't know it's, it's you just no, see the eyes like I'm the way they the playlist in the description the playlist for the experience the with, uh, with the master yeah. yeah so people can have a chance to take a look at oh, because some of them are really crazy I it's just insane saying. yeah yeah the jaytreya the stories he shared with me you know just like I want to we want to, yeah the channel. We we, have you to need talk. to film him like <laughs> the stories and not only also the stories of um miracles yes mm-hmm. but also the stories of guru disciple mm-hmm. how guru the should put them in really the edge of their capacity the mm-hmm. edge of their nerves you know and i was wanting something like this uh-huh. you know i wanted someone who challenged my yeah. ideas because yeah. I, I was tired of being always right. <laughs> well, I'm alone, I'm always right. Yeah. Because nobody is there to question me. And otherwise, I just changed the city until I, I made new friends it. that acknowledge how great I am. Amazing. So the idea of someone really challenging, mm-hmm. for me, was very attractive. But at the same time, when Guruji was doing this kind of challenge, I didn't like it. Of course, you don't like it. <laughs> it's, it's too annoying for the yeah. brain. So that was the first impression and was a bit... Um, too much, but at the same time, because of the stories of the people, I decided I want to see, I want to feel how they feel. I want to, like, I want to have the experiences they have. Mm-hmm. And so nothing else to do. Guruji was keep traveling in and out of the ashram. Um, every time he see me, normally he was very kind. Mm-hmm. You know, how are you doing? Um, and I was, you know, this like, today if Guruji asks you, how are you doing? Or what do you need? Like, immediately you need to be clever because that opens the door to many things. But good, good and bad, I would say. <laughs> you never know what's going to come you know? towards you. But you could actually be very close yeah. to, to, I don't know, to get a very divine gift, you know, mm-hmm. which, if, depending on the, on the answer you get. And, and every time he was asking me, how are you? Inside, I was just destroyed. Because <laughs> you go through the day, you are doing seva, and the mind is so active, especially when you start doing seva, mm-hmm. the mind becomes especially active. It's like, you know, you put a stick on the wound, yes. and you move it. And so the mind was super, super active, and mm-hmm. trying to run away. Everything was just an excuse to, okay, I don't need all of this, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't need this. I, I can, I'm perfectly sufficient by myself. Mm-hmm. I don't need people to tell me what to do. I don't need to complain. I don't need, you know, I can have a peaceful, lovely life <laughs> in Maya outside. <laughs> and yeah, and I don't give need me, to deal with the, the, the blue pill and I yeah, go back into I go the back matrix. To... <laughs> I know it's not real, this take, but it tastes good. But it looks so amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was the feeling. Give me back the blue pill. Yeah. I don't like the red one anymore. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and... With time, I needed to come back to come back to my country first, to to Argentina to fix my papers, and I wrote from Argentina a letter to Guruji. Thank you very much for everything, but I'm staying here. <laughs> because, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> yeah, I came back to Argentina, and my past was in a golden plate for me. All my ex-girlfriends writing to me; they wanted to see me. <laughs> my friends, uh, you know, uh, like just I don't know. Golden Blade of... Yeah, completely. Just the perfect uh, dream life. 
and I was already like six months living as a monk, let's say, in, yeah, yeah. Or, or four months. Uh, so when I came back, it became very, very challenging to come back to an ashram where the first supermarket is three kilometers away. It's in Germany and it's boring. You have nothing yeah, to that's... go around for miles and miles. You can talk with the wild bo uh, bears. You yeah, have like bears and wolves and uh, whatever, bunnies and yeah. deers. That's the, these are the party. And the smiley bactas, you know, that's, that's also the other thing. You have the bactas yeah, there. You have the ashram, it's amazing. Uh, so... I wrote a letter to Gurji and said, Gurji, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate what you have gave me. Uh, but I feel, I feel that I need to stay here, you know, <laughs> completely driven by desire. Like I was just, I wanted to enjoy life, basically. And yeah. um, I didn't have the number of Gurji, thank God. So I sent <laughs> the letter to Swami Danamje back then. He was the Swami who initiated me. Yeah. And thank God he just, called me and he said look he gave you because he invited you he gave you an opportunity to have an experience of one year in the ashram just don't waste it he was very to the point <laughs> don't waste it and i start thinking again why i want to stay why do i don't want to go because was this alarm inside of my yeah. brain game over <laughs> you know, you will have to change. Yeah. The transformation it's, starting. It's finished. You know, it cannot go back. <laughs> if this, you, yeah, I understand completely. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you yeah, came yeah. also. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a trap. You know, this kind of feeling that you give up everything at the end of the day. You end up giving up everything, and I think this is the alarm that's triggering because you know you have to give up stuff. Yeah. material, relationship, whatever you have to give away to make more room for God. Otherwise, how can you? God is like quite big, you know, <laughs> it, <laughs> you is, to make it takes room. space. It takes space and you but, need to give this space for him. Yeah. Somehow also the the patterns of the mind, yeah, yeah. because if I keep giving to the mind what the mind is constantly asking. Oh, yeah. And it's like there is no opportunity to challenge what is beyond that, you know, yeah. behind the desire, behind this uh, longing for material things, behind the, the friendships, behind the family. Like all of that is somehow a patch that I used to use mm -hmm. for whenever I didn't f like feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. you no, know? if I don't feel good, I go to see a friend. I go to speak with my mom. <laughs> I go to the cinema. I and I run away it. from that thing that is making yeah. me feel uncomfortable to look to... Uh, we're just feeling the void, basically. Yes. And instead of going through it and like, okay, let's face challenge it. things, yeah? Let's look face at, it. Look at it. No, let's, let's take some... Uh, <laughs> let's take some ecstasy. Let's yeah. uh, drink a beer, smoke a joint. And we'll, we, we, we'll see what happens. We'll see later. Yeah, exactly. See later. That was the thing. Like, okay, we we see later. Um... So he, so, he, he and Dan MJ told, told me, yeah. yeah, don't waste your chance. I said, okay, I, let's do it. One year. This could not be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> of course, inside of, like, in the back of my head was, this is a trap. Yeah. <laughs> this, if I go there, it's finished. Uh, because also I feel very attracted to all of this, yeah. to, to the, the humanism, to the people. Um, of course, with challenges, but... Not. So I came back, and then Gurji was very, very... Um, open, let's say, and at the same time that he was very challenging, he was like a father. Mm. So he took very, very good care of, mm. and he invited me soon for having lunch with him and to be around him. And then um, after, soon after, I immediately knew like it's finished. So I say, okay, let's don't delay this too much. Yeah, let's accept it. Let's accept it. My life Make is the best of it, yeah. Yeah, I, let's you go. You felt it. You just felt. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I felt. It's, it's my path. Like, wow. I I need to dive deep into it. Like, I want to become a monk. Uh, which uh, we we call the monks here brahmacharis. Yeah. And uh, basically, it's uh, one of the vows that you are taking. It's of celibacy. Yes. So that was one of the things that you had to give away, basically. Well, all that's those ex-girlfriends. <laughs> yes, but it's more in the mind, also, you know. Yeah. It's because that, that's the external act, but this what's going on in your brain, mm -hmm. and you cannot hide the hypocrisy mm -hmm. anymore. It's like when you become a child, it's, it's so obvious when you're being a hypocrite <laughs> that you dislike yourself 
you know it like it's yes. if in your brain you are like uh, soling ideas fantasies or whatever mm -hmm. you cannot deal with that anymore you it's not it's not only the acts in the exterior mm -hmm. it's just and Guru say Brahmachari is like the one who is constantly thinking in God. Mm -hmm. So the Brahmacharya path, because it's not a, the Brahmacharya path. Yeah, it's a is is also this to finally be that person that is thinking constantly in God. Mm, very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wanted because yeah. I knew that desires bring me anxiety. I knew that the external things bring more pain in the end. And you had the opportunity yeah. to experience everything. Yeah. And I exp yeah. I mean, I experienced many things. And I knew always happiness followed by unhappiness. Ice cream happiness, how Guruji puts it. Yeah. Mm? Exactly. Melts away. So you accepted to be, a, to be a monk, basically. Yes, I accepted to be a monk. And then Guruji, I don't know why, but he invited me to serve him directly in India, in his next trip. Uh -huh. And... So I say, cool, let's go on holidays, you know, let's go to India with the Guru. <laughs> and I have my first meeting with the people who used to serve Guruji. Yeah. Um, and, they, and they give me like a set of rules for serving him. Like a useful rules. Yeah, manual. To, manual, like a, man, a manual. Handbook, the, ha yeah. the handbook of the proximity <laughs> servant of Guruji. It's, there is no book that can explain how to. Because, uh, so the first rule was... Um, I mean, Pankaj wrote it, you know, yeah. he's serving Guruji since a long time. It's don't take nothing personal. Not, don't take anything personal. Very good rule. <laughs> Second, doesn't matter what happened, always keep serving. <laughs> Very good rule. And the third is like, um, he doesn't expect any kind of service, but your mindset should be that he's a king. For sure. You know? Because that's the mindset that makes you like, okay, what he will need next? Mm -hmm. And next, and next. So you need to be very like, Focus. Mm -hmm. It brings you to a state of like I cannot do a mistake. You know, like the mm -hmm. feeling of um, I don't know if if someone is hunting you. Yeah. Uh, imagine like yeah. you know, and you need to fight for your life. Yeah. All the senses are there. You know, you cannot give place to second All thoughts, to senses. fabula, to fantasies. It's, you need to be hundred percent present. So basically, that was the mindset of yeah. someone serving Guruji. You need to be there. In the moment you are like fantasizing whatever, yeah. things starts going. Yeah, yeah, because he's gonna, he, he's challenging he to bring, that. Yeah, he challenges, he challenges right? that because it's a training. It's a really intensive training, basically. Yeah, it <laughs> is. <laughs> and for me, especially, is I'm very easily going to, okay, a supernatural like world, <laughs> yeah, yeah. somewhere in the clouds. So, yeah, the service started and I just started doing mistake after mistake after mistake. And Guruji was calling them all out. <laughs> I remember before, because we were serving Guruji in two, ba in two shifts. Shift. Like the, the first one was the first 15 days of pilgrimage, where I was supposed to learn everything in 15 yeah. days. And then the second 15 days, I was alone with a Pankaj and Rishi Samal. And I remember I was trying to catch something what they were doing in the service, because you just see them walking Running. around Guruji, moving things, opening bags, closing bags, taking things out of a cap. Tea. <laughs> And you think like you are learning, you don't learn anything. Like, <laughs> and I was just watching at them and I was like, what that are they doing? You know? I need to, I'm supposed to do the same over this, but I have no clue. So I tried to approach, but that's why I didn't feel so comfortable around Guruji. Um, so yeah, they teach me how they could. And on the last day they, before they left, Guruji was in the table and I was speaking with them. And I told them like, how bad can it be? <laughs> and suddenly silence because Guruji also heard. <laughs> and Swami Ramat is like, oh, bro, don't say that. <laughs> you're inviting. Uh, yeah, just, basically, you're inviting and, that experience. In man, <laughs> and Guruji was just observing. Like, he was, no, it's just like, hmm. <laughs> I will take care of this. <laughs> yeah. And then, then he went. Full Guru disciple, full pointing out the things I need to change, full pointing out the mistakes. But what's not about that I understood it later, you know, it's not about him complaining about you, it's really him, like, pushing you to be the best version of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the things that my mind were normally, like, a problem for me in life, mm -hmm. he pointed them out. Because mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the patterns of the mind that normally put me into trouble. Of course. Put me in situations yeah. like, you know, typical, um, you are upset, you go emotional, you, you, 
you kick the board, like we say yeah, yeah. in Argentina, like you kick the, yeah. the, the chess yeah. board, you know? And this, that normally you break more the situation. Yeah, that break actually the situation. Yeah. And so these emotional states, uh, fantasy states that they were going against my, mm -hmm. myself. So Gurji was pointing them out. And what people think about me, that was a big one. You know, I was always very scared of public humiliation or public reputation. Uh, shame. <laughs> reputation. <laughs> reputation is important. <laughs> me, 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 I am. I am. Yeah. Yeah. And Guruji just destroyed. I remember we were in a huge auditorium with all the all the pilgrimage in India, and a few days ago, before Guruji was. Uh, in the mood of like finding saints, you know? Mm. So he was giving missions to people. Like so many Ruda Parta go to visit this, she's an incarnation of Kali. Um, the other guys go and speak with this guy. He's, uh, he's a saint asking for, sorry, mm. asking for, um, you know, if he wants to give his mala or something okay. for the museum. So everybody, or, or the, I could perceive everybody just with missions, you know? Mm -hmm. And let's find these mystical beings in India. So, and Gurji didn't ask me anything. <laughs> so, I just started walking and say, okay, let's see if I find a saint around, you know? <laughs> so I started... am, I, am I good enough? Just checking so it doesn't touch. It's good. It had no mission. So I have no mission. So I just found this random guy on the street and he looks quite sweet. And I started seeing, actually, he has a very shiny eyes, dress in orange, a lot of uh, vibhuti everywhere. And he, he with the malas. I said, man, this, I feel it, you know? It's, it's different, like with, mm -hmm. with him, I'm, he's not a normal person. Mm -hmm. I can't feel it. Mm -hmm. He's very special. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked him in my English Spanish if he would like to give me his mala. And he accepted. So I gave him some, some money and I, I took a picture of him and I sent to Guruji. And I asked Guruji, who is he? And Gurji answered back, <laughs> he's just a random person dressed in orange. <laughs> he's full of them in India. <laughs> my disappointment was like, oh, but I felt like my third eye was perceiving the sanctity of this person, you <laughs> And And then I'm, okay, you know, like, and at this moment I fed up. I said, okay, I don't, I don't mind. I, I don't want to meet any saint. I don't, I don't care. And I come to the hotel and Gurji is starting a satsang. And when I come in, he says, like this idiot, he's trying to find saints wherever, you know. And he said, they don't recognize you have the guru in front of you, the embodiment of all the saints, of all the deities. And he said, and you're trying to find it outside. And, and then for me, of course, I became like a tomato. Everybody, you know, she's like 200 people looking at you. and like, oh. So in public, he started doing these kind of mm -hmm. uh, situations. And for me, at the beginning, I was, you know, like, I want to you hide. take it, yeah. Yeah, I want, I, yeah, I... I could not accept like this public shame, you know, this uh, Destroying my reputation in front of everybody. Yeah, and nobody public, like because in private he's super sweet, you know, in yeah. private he's like super relatable, like can ask questions, we we could mm -hmm. speak about things, spirituality. Yeah. But in the moment we were in public it was like bro, uh, a war. Wow. And yeah, so these kind of things. And uh, and then we came back. And he keep challenge, challenging for years, in three, four years. And somehow, I mean, of course, continued time to time. I keep doing my <laughs> your, your my routine. <laughs> yeah, because there are some things that they are really, really stick to my personality. Um, but I would say that, yeah, the negativity of the mind, quite a lot of it left me mm. you know, for his grace. Like, his interaction, the way he acts, because one tried to understand why he does the things. And it's so difficult because one day, you know, uh, Guruji, like this, you know, and you say, okay, the way I relate with him is like this. Mm -hmm. This is my relationship yeah. with the Guru. And you, I try to explore, okay, let's go more deep into this. And he shifts and he shows you like a different relationship. And if in the Guru Gita, in the verse, I think it's 78, he explained it. He says, the people think they master one aspect of the Guru. Mm. And when they think they master it, then the master changes it. 
And I asked him, because for me it was annoying, because I said, what is his, this is bipolarity that he has, you know, because it's like he's changing from one to the other, and like multi-phase. And, and one time I asked him, because he asked me, what's, what's wrong? And I told him, Gurji, with one face of you, I'm completely cool. Mm -hmm. But the other face, I, I really don't like it. Mm. And he said, which other face? I have millions of faces. <laughs> I said, like, all right. <laughs> and, and he was not like, okay, we'll be okay. No, he's like, this is, this is how it is. Yeah. And when you think you master the next one, yeah. then he shows another one. And another one. So it always it's very difficult to, to feel like you know him. Because you, you know? actually don't. Because you, you actually don't. You're because not. if, if he is embodiment of all the divinities mm. within himself, mm -hmm. then it's impossible that you can actually, with the mind, get to know him. For sure. Yeah. And he says in the next verse, in the same Guru Gita, this, this is how the Guru reveals God to you. Mm. Because more you are mastering this different aspect of God. And he says, the Guru comes as Devi, mm. the Guru comes as Brahma, mm. as Vishnu, as Shiva. Yeah. You know, we have Shivaratri and you have Guruji in a super Shiva mood and, yeah, yeah. and not so approachable. I just had my first Shivaratri. This was your first. first time with Guruji Shivaratri. How was it? Super intense. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe the amount of transformation that happened in like two days, three days. <laughs> I got my, I got my, um, my shit back put together, you know, like people just putting me in my place, orientating me, like cutting my ego, everything that all was happening at the same time, but in a really loving way. Yeah. But it was super intense. Yeah. After that, like all my whole life changed completely after the Shivaratri. Yeah. People around me had the same experience somehow, crazy experience. And this Guruji that he has this, when he in Navaratri during those nine days, he's different every day. Yeah. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the Devi, Devi, he has that mood, he has that capacity. Different. Krishna or Krishna Janmashtami is the sweetest <laughs> for me. I have Krishna as my Ishta Devi. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I see Krishna Janmashtami, I, he's amazing. <laughs> Man. And you cannot yeah. confine God in one, uh, you cannot limit God. You cannot. And that, that's what the Guru can show you, that God is limitless. Yeah. You cannot understand it and say, oh, it's like this. And the easiest is to judge him, you know, because when the mind is also afraid of what it doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. So when you don't understand something, the easiest way is just to judge it. Yeah. And then you don't need to deal with it because the guru is super complex <laughs> for the mind. And it puts you in a position that the only thing you can do is to quit the mind. Yeah. Not, not, not the brain, like he wants us to use the brain and be clever, but to quit the mind in the, you cannot understand. Mm -hmm. Just accept, accept what is, uh, what is, what is the moment, well, accept in the moment what is happening to you and go beyond that understanding of the mind, you yeah. just go into the heart. Well, that's the thing, no? It also in the Bhagavad Gita is explained, the ones who transcend the mind is beyond this good or bad, pleasure and displeasure. So, you see, Guruji doesn't allow us somehow to get attached to any situation. Mm -hmm. He's constantly changing. And okay. when you're comfortable in one situation, he, he changes. Just to the next one. Okay. In the relationship with him, of course, but also in like... In your in life. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's constantly challenging you to change the situation you are. Yeah, and this actually, if you see the world where it's going, it's also crazy, actually creating the strength that we will need... To deal with all the situations that come yeah. to us. Flexibility. You're, yeah. Like if you see the like, adaptability. Yeah. You see in the ashram, every time, like Gurush is... <laughs> I always remember this poor guy in, was in Guru, Guru Purnima uh, last year. Like they need to organize for, I don't know, 1,200 people coming. And there is two big places that this event can be. So in the morning, Guruji say it will be in the tent. <laughs> now, okay, so they set up everything, decoration, couch, uh, not, uh, cushions, chairs. Two hours later, Guruji said like, no, let's do it outside. And they need to walk through staircase, you know, up and down and prepare everything in the parking. They finish, Guruji said, better in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> they move everything down. This went six times. Up and down. And like, you could see the event in the faces. They were like, you know, <laughs> not very friendly. And, but Guruji does it all the time. It's like, yeah. he doesn't allow that we go into the comfort zone of yeah. the mind. 
because he wants that you are always ready. And he shared many stories of saints, you know, that the, the guru was asking him like, okay, build this tower and the, the person build the tower and then mm -hmm. the guru just destroyed it and he said, build it again uh -huh. and build it again and build it again. And what you develop is not like a strength to keep building, it's more this acceptance that whatever you do, you do it with joy. And it's not, I think that that's a strength, you know, you stop waiting that what would be the best thing that we can mm -hmm. do. It's not so important. It's whatever you do will be amazing. You and, know, if you need to do it 20 times, that's matter. Okay, that's a service. If me, it's different or the same, that doesn't actually matter. So you, you create a mindset. It's a mindset at the end of the day. You yeah. train it to be like that. And for me, what helps a lot is humor. <laughs> because I, I had that experience, I don't know, uh, last year when Guruji wanted to give a darshan outside, and we prepared, prepared everything outside and there was a miscommunication <laughs> which asan should we put for Guruji, the one in the tent or the one in, uh, in the light hall. And in the tent there was another event, uh, afterwards there was a conference, a Swami was uh, having a talk. So we started this game of take the asan from the tent, put it outside, no, put it back in the tent, take the one from the light hall. And it was like, we did like five times. And the guys who were doing this, there were like, we were like five guys doing this. At one point, we just started laughing and we just started singing. And we were on the back of the truck. We are moving Guruji's asan, da 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 da. We started singing mantras and it was such an, because the, the just having the opportunity to do it, it, it didn't even matter if uh, uh, we had to do it another 10 times because we had we started laughing about it, making mm. jokes and we said, okay, this is what we have to do, we just do it. If we have to do this all day until Guruji comes, we just move this asana all day. Yeah. Started sharing with people, making other people laugh about it. And at, at the end of the day, it was a great experience. If we would have gone into the other side of, oh, are we doing this? Oh, are you, what's this lack of professionalism, you know, where's the communication you breakdown? you plan properly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can go in that mood or yeah. you can go in the other mood and just enjoy it, you know, which I, I always love, tackling spirituality with humor. Yeah. I think it's because Guruji has it. He's more healthy. Yeah, well, he is. Guruji is always in that mood somehow. He's always mischievous. He always plans something. He's always trying to, to get that uh, humor out of it. Yeah, and also he knows the reactions we will have. That's why he puts the test, you know, yeah. or these situations. Yeah, and it's true, like, all of these situations are actually opportunities to grow. Mm. That's how I see it, and I'm quite similar than you. But still, after many times, you also start getting upset, you know, it's like... Ah, because he's pushing the boundary. Yeah, you because you try to laugh, so he, okay, okay, he's I'm laughing, okay. okay. <laughs> exactly. It's the mid up, you know. Until you crack. Yeah. And, and then let go. Yes. Because in the end, it's about that also. It's yeah. just like pushing it, on doing the, the best all the time mm. you can. For what? For the welfare of the world. And it's also that test comes over and over again. And sometimes there was a beautiful satsang that uh, Swami, Swami Revati had in Elmira, and he said that he received the test multiple times, mm. and uh, he passed the test. I think the second time, and it kept on coming back and kept on coming back. And at one point, he asked Guruji, "Yeah, Guruji, but..." Uh, I, I, I feel like I, I, I'm passing the test, but it keeps on coming back and I question if I'm really passing the test at mm. the end of the day. I said, no, no, you learned the test. You, you, you passed the test the second time. <laughs> okay, but why is it coming back? Uh, because you're so used to fail <laughs> that I want to reinforce the habit of passing, that passing. Of, 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 of succeeding, you know? Because we are lives and lives and lives we try to Maybe we went on the spiritual path and maybe we also had uh, other experiences to get us to God, but we kept on failing for different reasons. Now he's just reinforcing, okay, you learn how to be uh, successful on the spiritual path. Hmm. And that's why he's pushing the boundary and giving so many tests. Yeah, he's shaping us. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, shaping like a carpenter, he's just a piece of wood and he's... Yeah. There. Chiseling, poc, yeah. poc, taking away everything that's not necessary. Yeah, but then also you have the factor that uh, you can start doubting, you know, and you can say why I'm doing all of this mm -hmm. because it puts you in those situations when the after a while you also the faith may disappear, you know, because the faith is tested. 
Mm. And what he wants is people that is constantly faithful of God. Doesn't matter the circumstances outside. Mm. So he created scenarios that where the, where the faith is tested and then you say, why am I doing all of this? Mm. And then I think it's the, the most difficult point for people in the past is when you see them with a the long face, when, yeah. because then you lose the meaning. They go through the process yeah. and the process never ends and you're like... Because you need to change. It's yeah. not that Gurji needs to do something. No. Yeah. Gurji said, like, in the moment you change, I change. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, I've had this experience. Like, I, I'm, I'm so happy that I, uh, I had this experience also at one point. Because I, at first, like you, you said uh, about the king, this is how I saw him f for the first year, I think. And I was quite distant because of this um, relationship that I had inside, you know. I was quite uh, distant from him because he was somewhere really, really high and I was hiding from him <laughs> somehow, you know. I was like, the king is coming, I'm too high, you know. And I'm not worthy <laughs> enough. And, and, and I prayed since we had to come here and uh, the things developed that we move, were moving here. And I prayed inside and I said, Guruji, you know, I, I really want like a normal relationship with you. I don't want to be, to feel you so, to be afraid of hmm. this proximity. And he helped me with that in one, in an instant, yeah. you know, he reflected back that longing and he just came naturally to me. At one day I was in the parking lot, he, I was alone, somehow it happened. He was just coming down and he was like, hey, how are you? And I was like, Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm fine, Guruji. I heard you do uh, massages. Yes, Guruji. <laughs> they say you're really good. I don't know, <laughs> Guruji. He is good. He's very good. <laughs> no, I, I, in the camera, he's very good doing massages. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Let's say I enjoy doing this because it's really beautiful to, to serve this way. And he said, maybe you do a massage to me one day. And I said, Guruji, whenever you want. <laughs> and this is how the new the new relationship began when he was and now from the king he became a father you know yeah. and i feel him in this relationship and I, I i i'm so grateful that i had the experience or that i heard that he reflects how you approach him he will approach you and we have that in bhagavad gita krishna says that yeah however 4 11 yeah however you approach god he will reciprocate that you yeah know? And it's, yeah, and it's a big thing. I mean, that's also the main reason why Gurus is so widely criticized by people. Yeah. Because if if you just take him as a cheater, mm -hmm. he will reflect back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the that's, perfect mirror. Yeah. He's the perfect and, mirror. And because he's not also attached to anything. He just... He doesn't care about his reputation. No. <laughs> do what he needs to do for help you to grow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's a perfect mirror for judging. Like, yeah. you see it. But then you, you need to stay around and you also need to like give the benefit of the doubt because he normally gives both, yeah. you know? He yeah. gives you nine reasons to judge or to doubt, but one, that if yeah. you fall into that, there is no way all the negativity can take yeah. it on. And then you have the, cho the opportunity to decide, yeah. you know? Or you focus on negativity mm -hmm. or on the positive. And that is a huge learning that Guru is giving us, yeah. you know? Because he's training us to always focus in the positive things. Otherwise you go down and you are aware of that. So this is a, for me, the, like the main transformation that Gurji did in my life is he gave me the capacity first to focus on the positive things. Mm. And now that the, like, what I'm really trying to do is to overcome that positive negative and just trying to be above that state, mm. you know? Because still the preference for positive thought versus negative thought, I really would like to be free of that. To be in that equanimity state. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's doesn't the outside matter. circumstance. It's, it's all God's will, yeah, you know, and absolutely. really live it like that, re accept it like that. Yeah, that's the, the state I'm right now. Like, mm -hmm. we like to, to love whatever state mm -hmm. I come with. But I like what you said about the prayer, because to do the right prayer, you know, you ask for him, like, I, the proximity, or like, not the proximity, but like the relationship, relationship. to feel more close. You know? yeah. And this, you can also do it with the deities, like the way you relate with him in the altar, the way you relate with him in the temple, inside of you, how you speak to him. Mm. Because if you see the Bhagavad normally we share our life with Guruji, despite Guruji not being physically there. Yes. You go through things, you say, oh, Guruji, again, this, you know, you <laughs> complain to him, you, 
Like if he would be walking Guruji. next to you. Guruji did this. <laughs> yeah, oh, why Guruji put me again in the same situation? <laughs> Nobody can blame him. Yeah, we always <laughs> blame on him, always. He's the scapegoat. Yeah, and now when something goes good, I'm so amazing. Exactly. Look what I did. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I see that a very nice prayer that you did is to ask him for that relationship. communion, relationship, more close to him. Because this, you know, I experienced many times doing prayers here. Like the first time I came, the first uh, time I prayed in, was during the Lakshmi Yagna, mm -hmm. a, a few weeks after I came. And I was, you know, back then smoking, drinking, eating meat. And Guruji told me, you can come to the Yagna with the residents. Mm. And when I was going, someone told me, you know, to Ma, you can ask her whatever you want. She will fulfill it. Mm. Like she's the mother, she's the loving, caring mother. And I asked, Please allow me to stop smoking, drinking, and eating meat. Mm. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't want it anymore. I, wa I wanted to stop for years, but for 10 years I could not. Meat mm. since I'm young, cigarettes since 10 years back then, alcohol almost the same. And from one day to the other, gone. You just took it away. One thing, I, I asked so many stupid things. Like mm. one time I asked for a computer <laughs> because I wanted to study. <laughs> So for no reason, the same morning, I go to the facilities meeting, like we work in construction and things like this. And my boss said, oh, I was thinking you will need a computer in case, you know, we need to just uh, order some stuff online. I said, like, I don't need a computer, you know, it's like, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure I already ordered one for you. And then I have a computer to study. Um, another time when I wanted to share the experiences, I wanted to record experiences. I was in the altar just crying, thinking so amazing would be to just like traveling around the world with a, with a camera. I was thinking just a phone, a very good phone, and I can record experiences of people, you know. And then I'm, I do this prayer, like I, I would really like to have like a, a good phone to do this. And in that moment, Swami Tulsi just came inside of the room. He was staying with us. He put the Narasimha on my head. He leave it there like, I don't know, 20 seconds, walks away. <laughs> that was at night. I go to sleep. Next day, I go down and breakfast. I find Govin, and Govin told me, "Oh, I was thinking I will leave you my phone, the new iPhone, you know, because I don't know his father, whatever he could get a new one." Uh -huh. I said, "I will give you this to you, and you know, you can record experiences." And so coincidences <laughs> all the time. And but these are the silly ones. But I also, you know, one time I ask, um, "I'm in my room." This is a secret. <laughs> Don't share it. <laughs> I hit some camera, bro. If you put, you want me to edit it? <laughs> I cannot edit. No, because I, I don't think it's good. But yeah, but it's okay because we're speaking about the right prayer. You know? Yes. The right prayer is to ask for you know to, for this inner relationship, relationship mm -hmm. with love, with God, with the Guru. Like mm -hmm. the, the Guru is embodiment of all the divinities. Mm -hmm. So either there is no difference. But you can also ask for other things. And this time, for example, one of the times, I was in my room and it was this winter in Germany and Gurji was about to go to Mauritius. I said like, man, I want to go. <laughs> and winter I, in Germany is not fun. It's not, it's not so enthusiastic. Are you coming from Latin America? <laughs> it's not the best weather. I mean, today is an amazing day. Yeah. We can say it with the horses. It's very beautiful, yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful place. We are not complaining. It's no, quite it's a amazing. paradise. It's a paradise. <laughs> it depends on but the mindset. Sometimes uh, the weather is challenging. But you know, day. was COVID time, was a lot of people sick in the ashram. We were going through a lot of... Regulations, rules. You're not yeah. go outside of the room. Like we, we were scared yeah. of walk this path. Like, you know... Because people will call the police. Yeah, the people will call the police. Like you're walking in the forest or something like this. And so <clears throat> it was a very challenging time. So I bowed down to my altar and said, Gurji, I want to go to Mauritius. <laughs> like that was like, no, not Gurji. I said, Ma. Yeah. Because I always pray to Ma. Ma, I want to go to Mauritius, please. <laughs> so I, I walk away. I walk out from my room. I go to the lobby. And I found Mukunda and Gurji in the lobby. I said, oh, I did, yeah. I, said, I go there, I go down. And we start walking up. And by Kali, Gurji turns and he says, oh, um, you want to come to Mauritius? <laughs> And I shout, yes! <laughs> and then that's how it started, actually. That was the first year of experience. Of experience in Mauritius. Yeah. Like, but like this kind of, I mean, um, 
it's sweet that he answer our prayers it's sweet that we can ask whatever we want but in the end because also mauritius could become a health yeah, yeah you know um and that's what guri showed me on the last trip you know it's not really about the external relationship with him it's not really about that externally he is because he needs to be there to teach you to help you to grow um but there is a lot of fantasy in the external relationship with the guru so Gurji kick out that part. Yeah, and he said the most important is the internal relationship with him. And and this, the prayer, you know, when you're in your room praying for something, just ask his feet. That's the only thing, as weird yeah. as it looks yeah. like, just ask, ask his feet. Ask for the feet of God. Uh, I'm, uh, I want to clarify a little bit this prayer thing, because my one might say oh, okay man but these are can be coincidences this can be um he heard from someone and uh, one what how i experienced the prayer uh i was before even meeting guruji i had uh, a really problem with addiction i was in uh being an actor you know being an artist you're exposed to the whole uh, menu you 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 can you you can be creative if you are high if you are you have to be sad you have to be suffering to be a creator you know and i had this 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 is something that i tackled many years this addiction i couldn't get away from it and uh, it became at one point unbearable because my wife is my best friend she's literally my best friend and this is how we got together so we were together for so many years we are shiny happy positive people but we ended up in uh, 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 one year of clouded relationship because my addiction was taking over and i couldn't uh, she was she was not saying anything she's an amazing person she was all she's always supporting but i felt on the inside things were drifting apart and when i saw that i have to choose between my wife and my addiction i said this is the end game if, if, I, if I, I i was not strong enough to do it so i was in that point and i said god hmm. please i beg you please help me with this because i cannot do it by myself i cannot do it by myself it was, I think, one of the rare times where I, when I prayed from the heart. And then, long story short, I ended up doing Atma Kriya Yoga. That's when I felt the grace of the masters. And then I ended up coming to the ashram. This is a crazy story, by the way. I should share it sometime with you. And I have my first darshan. And a lot of things happen when I come here. He literally cracks my mind. Mm. He destroys me completely. And when I come back, my wife says, ah, oh, you're different. And I said, oh, some, some crazy shit happened there. <laughs> and I wanted to go in my room where I had all my stuff. And I said, I have to waste my brain because I cannot make any sense of what happened there. And I open all the stuff and I smell and I try to do something and I'm like, I don't feel it, man. You mean like the... Yeah, to roll a joint and to... I don't feel it anymore. And I was like completely shocked because I was like Pavlov's dog. I could only think about it and I would... Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't feel it. And I throw everything away. And from that day, I never touched anything. Alcohol, drugs, um, cigarettes, nothing. He just took away the addiction, bro. And that for me was like, he answered a prayer that I, I did had before. had before even meeting him. Yeah, and I never asked. You don't need this. Yeah, but this is the power of the prayer. And I, I was wondering if, if he answers the prayer I was doing to God, what's his access? Yeah. Who is this yeah. guy, bro? If he, if he answers the prayer that... I never told anyone, bro, about this prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew, and he knew it, and he took it away. This was his grace. Yeah, and why he does it, you know? why he needs to do it. <sighs> like, honestly, like, if you think, would you incarnate again for someone that you don't know and spend your life just trying to help that person? 
And this again, another life. Another life, just some random person from the village, you never, or even someone you don't even like. And you incarnate again and again, like his mercy, you know, imagine life after life coming and trying to help us to, dis come, to discover this something bigger and the soul, God, like, it's just amazing. He took yeah, all of this, we say, oh yeah, he just prayed for me or he took it, but you know, like behind the addictions, all the samskaras, all the karma that is sticking. All the lives. All the lives in which you tried to do it and you couldn't. Yeah, but I mean the weight of that. And then that the guru is, he make it look easier. You know, it's like when you see a professional tennis player, you know, and they look, they make it look easy. I can do that. Yeah, I can do it also. <laughs> but then the guru does it and it looks easy. He just remove, like Mahaswana does also his story is public. Yeah. When he said, um, guru, she just like, you don't need this anymore. You know, yeah, he yeah, just remove yeah, it. Yeah. And the pain the guru needs to go through it, the, the, yeah, he attack upon he himself, you know, all of these things. And it's, it. it's just amazing that him, life after life, he's just as a sacrificial lamb, you know, he just come and sacrifice himself for mm -hmm. everybody. And that's the, that the sad part is that if you don't understand, it, or if you don't feel it and you don't give it a benefit of the doubt to just try to go deeper, you just judge. But the mercy of the guru is that even if you judge him, he is helping you in that moment because you focus on him. Yes. <laughs> I, always, you know, yes. <laughs> I always share the story of Swami Pepe when he was in the airport with Guruji and there are these four business guys standing there. Yes. You know, like talking like this. Yeah, with the and, suitcases. Yeah, right? suitcase, suit, suitcases. And Guruji just walk in the middle of them, kind of like pushing Bumping them. Bumping into them. And cross in the middle. And they were like completely mesmerized like what what did that why did that happen you know why this guy just crossed in the middle of all of us and so i asked guruji why did you do that guruji and he said uh in this life this is the only opportunity they have to focus on god hmm. you know like the master will will do anything just for to you. catch you because that would be a transformation you. That would be a transformation point for you. Yeah. The, the life of those guys would not be the same. Exactly. Yeah, it's planting a seed. Exactly. Maybe not in this life, but in the next life or the next No, life. and you see like all the interactions with Guruji in our life that didn't make sense. Yeah. But look, if you look back, the kind of life you have now, you know, the kind of awareness of life, like the, the inner joy. Oh, my, I cannot imagine my life before. I, I'm really, I, I cannot yeah, I, go back. <laughs> I'm like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful for all the experience. Don't, I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm grateful for all the experiences. This is the... Call of duty. <laughs> call of the wife. Um, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> if you see this video, honey, I'm calling you back. I'm just wrapping it up. Uh, the, 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 the seed that he's planting is... Uh, you will never find out when it will bloom. And he's doing it for everybody. I mean, thousands of people have took darshan from him until now. And he's, oh, even the people from the airport, imagine. Yeah. All the airports that he traveled, walking on the street. Yeah, or he went like, also whatever, you know, nothing is random what he does. No. I remember in Brazil, when we met uh, your first guest of this, it was Govin. Yes. Uh, he shared how he met Guruji? <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 he no? didn't. I, it's, it's recorded somewhere also, but yeah. basically, he went to Brazil to get inspired to do a, a script, because he's a cinema director, a script about a love story. And in the moment he arrived to Brazil, he met Swami Sridhar team back then. They shared some... Yeah, they, they are cinematographers, both yeah. of them, <laughs> so it was like instant connection. Emilia, <laughs> both all from the America, the world, yeah. and because he, he asked him, like, do you know where I can buy a, a SIM card, you know? Uh -huh. And this started the conversation, and then he said, my guru is coming tomorrow, you may want to meet him. And then Govin said yes. So he came, he waited next day, and in the moment Guruji came out from the plane, he just, he checked the, the hand of, checked the hand of uh, Govin, and give him the bag. So go and start carrying Guruji's bag, walking towards the next flight. Right. And then he's there like, what should I do? And Guruji invites him to come along. 
So he was supposed to go to Rio, to get, Rio de Janeiro, to get inspired, to write this, and suddenly, pff, Guruji he ended up his Guruji. And now resident in Shupitan Ilaya since you know, two years. And that's the thing, you know, Guruji is not randomly in that airport yeah. at that time meeting this person. He's just like going around the world and doing Fisher all what he own. does. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to believe, but yeah. it is. Wow, bro, this was an amazing journey. I feel like we could do another another one to share some more stories because we just touched upon a few and you have some, I'm sure, crazy experience that we could share. Uh, I don't know what time is it. We are here, we have made the full circle. This was a, a beautiful parikrama. Yeah. You have a meeting like in eight minutes. In eight minutes, yeah. Seva. Seva. Seva, tell us a little bit about what Seva means and what's the purpose of Seva. This was something at the core of the mission. Selfless service, Seva. What does Seva mean for you? Well, it's... Because I, I know you, you can, you're addicted to Seva. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of your addictions, is Seva. Seva alcoholic. Seva, Seva alcoholic. Uh, well, yes, it is, but it's, there's no difference between life and Seva and Seva for me. It's just Seva. That's life. Life is service. Service is life. So, mm. And when somehow I accept it and I jump into it, okay, life is about service, let's serve. So I try that everything that I'm doing is with the spirit of service. And that's it. And then joy comes with him. And purpose and understanding. It's just all the secrets. And transformation. Everything. Look, in the, yeah. read the Guru Gita. You have in the, from verses 60 to 80. 60 to 80. And you will see the grace of service. Like and Guruji told me in Mauritius uh, two years ago, the, like the purpose of human life is to find your sad guru and serve him. Where are we, Rishi? Uh, we are buying stuff because we are going to Argentina in four days and I'm taking things for the devotees there, the bhakti shop. And this so is the bhakti stay. shop? Wow. Yes. You're making supplies? Some of them. <laughs> okay. Nice. nice. Oh, nice. what do we have here? Nada Bhakti Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, Shandita Bhakti Sutra. A lot of knowledge, a lot of books. The stories, the, the teachings that Guruji is giving us lately. Amazing, yeah. amazing. We are showing to everybody also the our shop. We have an online shop also. Amazing we devotee. Do have. We do have. <laughs> amazing. What's in the shop? Everything. <laughs> Everything, Everything is in the shop. Whatever. Murtis, we have Shandam, we have Tulsi Malas books everything wow so i'm gonna put a link in the description also for the shop and people can check it out they have they can check out the books and uh, the ashram life is like this we have devotees singing
this is going to be one of our guests. Don't make promises on camera. He's not making promises, but his heart is longing to share his story. And I know that you want to have a conversation about your journey and to share. I'm happy. To, I, I wouldn't go to that. I would say I am happy to share with you my conversation and my journey. <laughs> okay, brother. I, I, I am really looking forward to that walk. Okay. Well, Just we we have to pray for him to finish his seven. I'm writing. I'm writing a great text. <laughs> it's like a sastra, like a scripture of the annual report. It's not the most difficult one. But yeah, Dantatas, Dantatas is gonna be with us. Okay. I can hardly wait. Amen. Amen. Amen.